Today, the Republican majority is not judging the president with fairness, but impeaching him with a vengeance. In the investigation of the president, fundamental principles which Americans hold dear, privacy, fairness, checks and balances, have been seriously violated. And why? Because we are here, as we are here today because the Republicans in the House are paralyzed with hatred of President Clinton, and until the Republicans free themselves of this hatred, our country will suffer. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats finally doing what they said they were going to do for a very long time. They stopped beating around the bush. They stopped hemming and hawing. They have finally bit the bullet, and they have formally announced an impeachment inquiry. Now, what does this mean? What is an impeachment inquiry? Basically, they're going to investigate whether they're going to draw up articles of impeachment or not okay now i'm not the smartest guy in the world i'm not albert einstein over here but i thought that was the whole purpose of the Mueller investigation I mean, you're talking about almost three years like 40 million dollars just countless resources 500 subpoenas just all kind of stuff to figure out if there was any kind of russian collusion russian interference any kind of impropriety with donald trump his campaign or anybody around it, they found nothing. They found zero. They found zilch. A big fat nothing burger. Nothing was really accomplished by this whole report. So I don't know how they're going to find anything new with less time and less resources. I just don't see it happening. And furthermore, I don't see how they're going to actually get impeachment done in its full way without the support of the Senate, because let's be clear, the impeachment inquiry is nothing. That's just to say, if they're going to draw up articles of impeachment, then they got to vote on articles of impeachment. Then it has to go to the Senate for a trial. And you need two thirds of the Senate to convict the president to get him removed. And last time I checked, the Senate is controlled by a Republican majority. So how are you going to get 20 Republican senators to defect in a partisan way and vote against Trump on nothing, like absolutely zero. You found nothing in the Mueller report. The Democrats couldn't do any kind of impeachment after that. So why are you doing it right now? Well, <laughs> there's a few reasons. First of all, I think Nancy Pelosi is not really in charge, okay? She's speaker of the House. They have the majority in the House, the Democrats say this, but she, Nancy Pelosi, is not really in charge. <laughs> I saw um, a bottom third on Fox News, and I placed that on the screen before you, and it says that if you want to know what Nancy Pelosi will do tomorrow, read AOC's tweets tonight. That's pretty much how that goes. AOC... The far leftist Democrats, they control the House. That's what's going on, in my humble opinion. They had been on Nancy Pelosi's back for months, if not years, to go ahead and impeach Trump. Do it right now. Get it over with, especially since they took the House just recently. Like, do it. Let's go ahead and get her done. Do it right now. And Nancy Pelosi has finally taken the bait and done it. She should have stuck to her guns because before this whole thing happened, she was saying, well, we're not going to impeach the president because that's going to be a distraction. It'll make the Democrats appear like we can't govern, like we can't really win in an election because let's not forget, you still have an election cycle happening. You're trying to prop up old man Joe looking like he's half dead, one foot in the grave. But I digress. You're trying to prop him up. You're trying to get some traction going. So when you say, all right, we're just going to impeach the president with not much evidence. To me, that appears like you're just waving the white flag and saying, hey, we don't have anybody. So we got to do this in order to succeed in getting Trump out of office. They can't win an election in 2020. So rather than trying to actually compete, we'll just try to get him removed from office or make Trump appear to be a bad guy. Some people are going to the polls. They're going to think in the back of their mind, oh, this guy's being impeached. He might be removed. He's corrupt. Is that in the third with, like I said, no evidence of that being true. Now, let's get to the latest little quote unquote incident that allegedly has 
uh, throwing the Democrats over the edge. That was a last straw for Nancy Pelosi to go ahead and say, let's draw up articles of impeachment very soon after we get done with the impeachment inquiry. I did a video on this, and if you want to see it, I'll place that in the box. But long story short, Donald Trump had a phone call with the Ukrainian President Zelensky. In that phone call, Democrats alleged that he was, quote unquote, pressuring the president to investigate Joe and Hunter Biden for their improper business dealings in Ukraine. And if he, the president of Ukraine, did not agree to that, then the $400 million in aid that was given to the Baltic states, including Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, and also Ukraine, would not be given. But Trump has released the full transcript of that phone call. And if you want to read it straight from whitehouse.gov, a link for that PDF will be in the description box. I've read the full thing in its entirety. It's totally declassified. You can read it right now for yourself. There is no, I repeat, there is no quid pro quo in the transcript. None whatsoever. And if you don't know what quid pro quo is, basically that says, I give you something, you give me something. There's none of that in there. The quid pro quo, the Democrats and some of the leftist media alleged before the transcripts came out is that Trump said, if you do not investigate Hunter and Joe Biden, we, the U.S. government, will not give you this money that had been allotted to you for military aid. That was not in the transcript. The closest thing to that would be when Trump said, we do a lot for Ukraine. We are a big friend to Ukraine, but other European countries don't do as much as they should. They talk about Ukraine. Merkel talks about Ukraine and does nothing. And also how it's not really reciprocal. We, we give a lot of aid to Ukraine, but it's not really reciprocal. Later in the conversation, he does mention Hunter and Joe Biden, but that's part of a bigger thing. I mean, a prosecutor got fired and, you know, it was some other stuff with a server and just it was a lot of other things that were going on in Ukraine. Hunter and Joe Biden just happened to be part of it. But there was no quid pro quo saying, all right, we'll give you the money if you give us this. There was no mention of the aid package in there. All he said was we do a lot for Ukraine. Other European countries don't. And it's not really reciprocal. That is pretty much it. They're going to try to connect that. That's going to be a big time go, go gadget reach. Matter of fact, the Ukrainian president agreed with Trump that other European countries don't do as much as they should. He even said that Macron of France does not do as much. And he thinks that they should do more. He agreed with Trump. He was right locked up. Like he likes Trump, said in the Trump Tower when he was in New York recently. So <laughs> the media are accusing Trump of a thing that Joe Biden most likely actually did as far as any kind of extortion, bribery or whatever as it relates to Ukraine. Biden was assigned to Ukraine as some kind of special envoy. He had been to Ukraine many times, like 12, 13 times within a short period of time. Back in 2014, he went to Ukraine, and at the time, there was a $1 billion, with a B, billion dollar loan guarantee from the U.S. to Ukraine. But when he's there, he's talking to the officials, the higher-ups, and they're saying, hey, if you don't fire this prosecutor, then you won't get the money. And then he was bragging about how they were trying to tell me he has no authority, but he was like, nah, I guess I do. Go ahead and call the president and see what happens. And he said within a few hours the situation was handled the prosecutor was fired now the prosecutor was investigating a company called barisma holdings barisma holdings has the largest energy company in ukraine on the board of barisma holdings was one hunter biden joe biden's son hunter biden has zero experience in energy of any sort natural gas um you know raw oil nothing no experience, but he's on the board of the biggest natural gas company in Ukraine getting paid between 50 and $80,000 per month. So why are you on there? And he was a drug addict, a dope fiend, alcoholic, all of that. Had been locked up in some more stuff for that. So why would you put this drunk dope fiend on the board getting paid that kind of money? Why? Is it because you're selling influence? Is it because your dad is a vice president of the USA at the time of 2014? 
the media should be looking into that, but they want to look into this phone call that was absolute nothing burger. So Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats are pretty much pinning themselves into a corner. They are not going to get anything out of this. Um, <laughs> well, really, we'll get something out of it on the right. It'll be the same thing happened with Bill Clinton back in the day with Monica Lewinsky. The Republicans impeached him. Um, it, he did, it was no conviction, and it just made him stronger. It'll do the same thing to Donald Trump this time. The Democrats are trying to impeach. They're not going to get anything. It'll make him stronger. So I appreciate Nancy Pelosi and your AOCs of the world for making Donald Trump's 2020 campaign that much stronger. I mean, it was already pretty strong. We have a candidate who's pretty much on uh, his last leg, got one foot in a proverbial grave. Other candidates that are totally far to the left, uh, no genders, baby can be aborted up until it's, you know, born. All kind of crazy, ridiculous, outlandish things have already made the incumbent President Trump strong. Then when you add this on it, the Democrats will do nothing. We'll not only get the presidency, but also the House from all those failed Democrats who have supported impeachment that won't get it done. And we'll also maintain the Senate, if not grow the Senate more than what it is right now in favor of the Republicans. You'll have Ruth Bader Ginsburg retire or kick the bucket we're going to replace her and probably one or two more supreme court justices and we'll have control of the usa for many many years and generations to come so i'm all for it the democrats a hey, bad move but hey that is pretty much where you are nowadays all the way in the far left all you can do is make bad moves and that's pretty much all i gotta say about it what say you do you think that the democrats will be successful in their impeachment journey if that's your viewpoint let me know how and why in the comments below like i said the democrats have the house but you gotta have two-thirds of the senate that requires 20 senate republicans to defect basically and vote against trump over a nothing burger the real investigation should be on Hunter and Joe Biden for their dealings in Ukraine, not the president for this innocent phone call between him and the president, which, like I said, you can read the full thing in the box below. Am I right here? Am I wrong? Whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.